Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to connect to SQL Server using Visual Studio 2022. So first we need to download and install SQL Server. So let's go to this first link, it is on microsoft.com. Then let's scroll down. And we need to click on this download button. But in my case I have already downloaded and installed SQL Server. Now let's go to Visual Studio and we need to open any project. So I will open this project. Then we need to click on Server Explorer. So if we cannot find this Server Explorer just here, then we need to click on View, then Server Explorer. Then we need to create a new connection. So we can click on this button or also we can make a right click here, then Add Connection. Then in this window we need to select Microsoft SQL Server. Then let's click on continue. So if you obtain this window and you don't have here Microsoft SQL Server, then you can click on change. Then you can select Microsoft SQL Server, then OK. So here we need to provide the server name. Because the server is installed on my computer, so the address is localhost. Then slash. Then I need to provide the instance name. So the instance name in my case is SQL Express. So to find the instance name, we can start the services application. So here we can write services.msc. Then we need to find SQL Server. So this is SQL Server, in my case it is running. And between parentheses, we have the instance name. So here we can write localhost slash SQL Express, or also we can replace localhost by dot. Then we can select the database in this field. So let's click on this button. And here we have the list of the available databases. It is also possible to create a new database. So here we can provide the name of the new database that we want to create. So let's create a new database called Forum 2022. Then let's click on OK. So here we can see that this database does not exist. So let's click on Yes to create it. Now the connection is created. We can expand it and also we can expand tables and we can see that we don't have any table. So to create a new table, we can make a right click on tables, then add new table. So to change the table name, we can change it here. So I want to create a new table called users. So by default, we have this column. It is called ID and it is a primary key. And also it is of type integer. To make this column auto-incremental, we have to select it. Then here in the properties, we have to find the identity property. So this is identity. Let's expand it. And let's change its value to true. Now let's create a new column. I will call it username. It will be of type varcar. We can change the size of this column. Let's write 100 for example. And it should not be null. So let's uncheck this box. Let's create a new column. Let's call it email. It is of type varcar. And also it should not be null. So for the email, I want it to be unique. So here in the SQL, I can write unique. Now let's add a new column. I will call it phone. It will be of type varcar. And it can be null. Let's add another column. I will call it register date. 
it will be of type date time and also I want to provide it with a default value so for the default value it will be current timestamp let's press enter and now to create this table we can click on this update button then let's click on update database and the table has been created successfully so to find the table in the explorer we can make a right click then refresh so here we can see that we have this table let's close this page so to see the data of this table we can make a right click then show table data so here we can see that the table is empty and we can insert some rows so to insert the rows we don't need to provide the id because it is auto incremental also we don't need to provide the register date because it has a default value so let's provide the username let's write for example bill gates then let's provide the email then the phone number and let's press enter to insert the row so here the row has been added and we can see that it has an id and also it has a register date now let's add new rows let's press enter let's add another row and let's add a last row now we can close this page and to see the data again we can make a right click on the table then show table data so we can see that we have these rows it is also possible to update the rows so let's for example update the email let's press enter we can refresh the data and we can see that the email has been updated now to delete a row we can make a right click then delete let's confirm and let's refresh the data and we can see that the last row has been deleted now i will show you how to execute sql queries so let's close this page then let's make a right click here then new query so first let's check the name of the database which is currently selected then let's execute this query we can use this green button and here we can see that this is the database which is currently selected we can also read the data of the users table let's execute this query and here we can see the data of the table we can also add a where condition let's execute the query and here we have this row we can also use this interface to create a new table so let's remove this query and let's paste the query that allows us to create a new table let's execute this query and you can see that it has been executed correctly now let's refresh the tables and we can see that we have this new table it is also possible to add new columns into any table so for example let's add new columns into the users table let's close this page then let's make a right click on users then open table definition so here we can add a new column let's select the type it will be varcar and let's update the table so let's click on this update button let's click on update database we can also delete a table so let's make a right click on this table then delete let's click on update database and we can see that the table has been deleted 
We can also change the database. So let's make a right click on the connection name, then modify connection. And here let's select a new database. So I will select this one, which is my shop. Let's click on OK. Let's expand the connection, then tables. And here we can see that we have these three tables. Finally, to close the connection, we can make a right click, then close connection. 